So yesterday I took Kyra for a little bit of a trip to the woods and an explore and to do a little bit of mushroom spotting. You guys know I really love fungi and I love being out in nature as well. I love not necessarily foraging for fungi and mushrooms because I never pick anything and I don't touch anything, but I just kind of like spotting them and finding them and photographing them and then coming home and trying to identify them. It's really, really fun. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I feel like mushroom spotting is about really kind of like mindfully and purposefully observing your surroundings. You don't just walk through a forest and hope to find something. You really have to kind of look around you and be very observant. You want to be looking at the floor through the undergrowth. You want to kind of be looking up in the trees and at plants and there's so much more growing around you than you might realize. Being out in the woods isn't just trees and some leaves and some grass. There is so much life there to see if you just kind of stop for a moment and take your time and really notice everything that's going on. One of the first big kind of bundles of mushrooms that I came across were these, which I think are common earth balls. They're sometimes known as pigskin poison puff balls, which you might be able to tell why if you have a look at them and the texture uh, that they have on the outside. These guys are poisonous, so it's really important that you don't touch them, you don't pick them, and you absolutely do not try and eat them. There are lots of mushrooms which can be poisonous, which can look very similar to non-poisonous mushrooms, so unless you really, really know what you're doing and you have a hell of a lot of experience in identifying mushrooms, I wouldn't recommend you go out and pick anything yourself. I just really enjoyed the spotting and the looking and leave it there because you don't want to take any risks with this stuff. These guys are usually found on the forest floor and they actually kind of live in sort of symbiotic relationships with tree roots. So if you want to look for these guys, they look a bit like yellowish potatoes in a way, but obviously not edible. And you'll find them often around the roots of trees and things like that. You'll also notice they tend to live in like sort of little clusters. So if you see one, take a look around and within like a few inches of it, you'll probably spot another one and then another one. And before you know it, you're like, oh my God, there's like 15 in front of me. It's kind of funny because they're so kind of small and round. And even though they're yellow, they're not that bright. So they're quite easy to miss and walk past unless you're actively looking for them. And then once you've spotted them, you kind of can't see anything else. You're like, oh my God, they're, they're all around me. <laughs> another really interesting thing that I came across was uh, this this little thing and I saw loads of leaves around that looked like this and they had these like weird little balls on them And I had no idea what they were so I took a photo and I came home and I started doing a little bit of research And it turns out that these are called galls and they're caused by gall wasps Now these gall wasps are parasitic to oak trees and what they do is in the springtime They lay their eggs in the buds of oak leaves and then as the leaf grows so does uh, the egg. It hatches into a larva, which then secretes this material, which causes certain bits of the plant tissue to swell, which causes these galls that you're seeing here on this photograph on the leaf. The larva then like feeds on the plant tissue within the gall and grows until they hatch. And they tend to fall to the ground around autumn time, around now, which is why you're seeing all these fallen leaves with little galls on them, which are gonna hatch into gall wasps, which I think is absolutely fascinating. My first instinct when I saw this was that it might be some kind of like slime mold at first because it does sort of look a little bit similar to that. Um, I thought maybe it was that, but like dried up and darker and old. But then the more research I did, I'm almost certain that these are galls and I just, I think it's kind of fascinating and a little bit gross. It's kind of scary, isn't it? I love it. I love it. Nature's so cool. <laughs> You'll also notice that growing really, really close to them are these tiny little mushroom boys. And these are kind of little brown mushrooms. And there's lots of mushrooms that are little and brown and all look very, very similar. So identifying these and trying to figure out one from the other is quite difficult and really tricky. And I'm still not sure I've managed it yet. But I think these ones might be maroon brittle stems. Correct me if you think I'm wrong. I'd love to hear your input in the comments. I'm sure many of you know a lot more about fungus than I do and mushrooms. I'm sure many of you have been doing this a lot longer than I have. But when you're trying to kind of like identify these and tell one from the other, you need to be looking at kind of like subtle differences in color, things like the shape of the gills and what they look like. 
the shape of the stem and if it has like a, a little ring on it or anything like that. You're looking at the size and the height and everything. It is possible to tell them apart visually, but it's just different and takes a lot of practice. These guys tend to grow on like woody debris or wood chips and these guys are tiny, they're really really small, they're about three centimeters in diameter each and they had these like quite long thin stems but they were really really hard to spot and there were only these three together and I'm quite lucky that I did see them. But this kind of like brings me on to another kind of tip or bit of advice for you if you're out there looking for mushrooms and fungi and that is look for things like fallen wood on the ground or decaying wood or wood chips or things like that because you'll usually find loads and loads of fungi and mushrooms growing in there as we're going to see next up here where I talk about what I think are common field caps. I saw these last month and I thought they were spring field caps but then I was like okay no it's completely the wrong time of year I'm an idiot. So I think they're just common field caps but again really hard to tell them apart so if you guys have a better idea please let me know. These guys also grow in wood chips and unlike the maroon brittle stems, they're a little bit more whitey, creamy, yellow coloured rather than like reddish maroon, you know? So I have two lots of foots to show you of these guys from exactly the same spot but taken about a month apart. So back when I saw them in September, they were like this and they were brighter, they were whiter, there were way more of them growing and they were kind of clumped closer together when they were growing. Now there's fewer of them, they're a little bit smaller, they're more spaced apart and also weirdly they're more kind of yellow, they're slightly darker which I found really interesting and I also saw this little clump of them um, in a, it, it was the same spot but it was kind of like a few meters to the side of the others where a little clump had been growing and clearly they'd been eaten and there was a very content chubby looking slug right next to them and I was like oh he's had a little feast, look at him. So that was very exciting to see. Of course we weren't just looking for fungi and mushrooms, Kyra was also having a good run around and uh, she was finding some sticks to chew and she was having the time of her life and she was just having an amazing time. Um, I love having her with me when I go and do things like this because she makes me feel very very safe. Obviously as like a woman alone you don't always feel safe going to like an isolated location like a forest where you can't necessarily guarantee you're gonna have phone signal or anything like that. You don't know who you're gonna come across and see. So having Kyra with me makes me feel really, really safe because I know she's not gonna let anyone hurt me. She's not gonna let anything happen to me. The thing is though, I know I can take her with me on these kinds of things because she's a very, very well behaved dog and I know she won't eat anything off the ground. So for example, when we did see poisonous mushrooms, I wasn't scared she was gonna try and eat them because, you know, she's a little angel. But if you do have a dog who is prone to just kind of like having a chomp on anything they find, please be very, very careful with them when you take them around somewhere where you're going to be looking for mushrooms and spotting mushrooms and just keep a very close eye on them and make sure they don't eat anything that they shouldn't. Another mushroom that I saw quite a lot of yesterday that I want to talk a lot about are birch polypores. Now these guys grow huge, they are massive, they're chunky. I always think they look a bit like clumps of cheese growing on trees. Um, unsurprisingly by the name they do grow on birch trees so when you're looking for these I often like, like to look up and you can notice birch trees because they've got like the white bark that's quite bright and these guys kind of like stick off the end and they're, they're quite obvious. I've got a few photos to show you here from the differences between when I saw them in September and October so you can kind of see there's a slight change in colour and shape between those times. Um, this is a mushroom though that has a really really fascinating history because it was found to have been carried on the body of the Iceman or I think they also call him like Otzi or Otzi, I'm not sure but he was um, pretty much the oldest naturally mummified body that we've ever found um, he's about 5,000 years old and he was found in a glacier in the Alps and he was carrying a bunch of things on him and it told us a lot about you know humans at that time, it's absolutely fascinating. But one of the things he was carrying was bits of birch polypore tied to like leather straps on his belt and there's like a whole number of reasons why he could have been carrying this and it's, and it's highly debated and really really interesting. So some people think it was used for kind of like carrying fire because it can sort of hold fire for a long time and if he was like you know being in caves and he needed something that's like a light source there's a chance he was burning it and using it for that. 
Uh, the other thing is that this is an edible mushroom and it's thought to have like a ton of medicinal properties from everything from being like antibacterial in some cases to some people think it can be used for pain relief, some people think it can be used to kind of help wounds heal quicker. So there's a chance he was carrying it for that reason as well. But there's a whole lot of really fascinating history about it and I do recommend you go and do a little bit of reading up if that's something that interests you because it's fascinating. And this is quite a common mushroom that doesn't look like much, but it's so fascinating. And finally, I wanna to touch on an interesting little fungus, which I didn't see any of yesterday, but I did see back in September. And it's surprisingly common, but it's very, very easy to overlook. And you don't always realize that it's a fungus you're looking at. Because if you've ever seen kind of blue or green staining on wood, like this photo, which I know is bad, it's zoomed in. I'm just trying to show you the staining on this. It's not the clearest, I'm sorry. Um, when you see this, you just see stained wood and you might not realize you're actually looking at a fungus here. Don't get this confused with dust lichen, which looks like this and can also sometimes be green. The difference is this, well, this is a lichen, which is also kind of fungi, um, but this is kind of more textured and it's something which grows on trees. The fungus that I'm talking about today are green wood cups, or more specifically, I'm gonna try and pronounce this, Chlorocyboria originascens. I think that's how you say it. Now, what's really exciting about this is uh, not necessarily the wood staining, but when it fruits, and it doesn't do this very often. It is so rare to see it fruiting, but when it does, it looks like this. And it has the most gorgeous, tiny, little, bright blue mushroom kind of cup-shaped things. And these are, these are tiny, we're talking like millimeters big, but they're the brightest, boldest, most beautiful blue. And the fact that I actually got to see this fruiting last month was so, so exciting and I felt so lucky and it was absolutely wonderful. It's like, this is what's so exciting about going out on mushroom spotting is when you see these little rare boys like this and they're just so stunningly beautiful and I just, I was so thankful to be out there and able to see them. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you today. I know this is a little bit different from some of my usual content, but I just had so much fun with it and like I say, I, I thoroughly encourage anyone who is interested in fungi to go out and do these kinds of things as well. You'll see different kinds of fungi growing in different places, in grass, in wood chips, in forests, in all sorts of places. The key is to just be really observant when you're looking around you and take your time and have fun and really appreciate where you are and what you're seeing. But as always, you have to be really careful. And like I say, don't touch unless you're 300% sure you know what you're looking at and definitely don't eat unless you've been doing this a long, long time or you have an expert with you who says it's okay. So they, they would be my bits of advice. But for now, thank you for watching and um, hopefully I'll see you again soon.